Welcome back to Biochemical Techniques in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so we've been going over some of the theory and gel electrophoresis. Now I'm going to give you some sample data, and I'm going to explain to you how to basically make a standard curve for gel electrophoresis. Okay? So what I have already here is what comes right off of your gel. So to do this, remember you actually need to run the electrophoresis, obviously, and then you're also going to need a ruler to measure the migration distances. And by the way, these are gonna be in centimeters, okay? Um, you'll also have the molecular weight standards. These are the number of the standards. I have eight of them in this case. And they have these molecular weights in Dalton's. Okay, these are the molecular weights, all right? So the molecular weight standards, this is how I make my calibration curve. So remember, the first thing you do in the gel electrophoresis, you don't worry about your unknown. You always make the calibration curve and you make it from this data in the molecular weight standards. Okay? Now let me go ahead and show you something. If I because you need the molecular weight and you need the migration distance. What happens if I try to graph this? Okay, and by the way, migration distance is my independent variable. Molecular weight is sort of my dependent variable. So this is my x-axis, this is my y. But let me show you what happens when I try to graph this. Okay, you get something that looks like this. It's not a straight line. Remember in science, science is the pitiful attempt to force everything into a y equals mx plus b, a straight line. This is clearly not a straight line, so I'm not looking for this data. So when I do gel electrophoresis and I make my... I ultimately make my uh, calibration curve. Instead of molecular weight, I need to find the log of the molecular weight. That's log base 10. So what I do is in Excel or numbers, I hit the equal sign to bring up the function button. I just type in log. This is log base 10. All I'm going to do is click then this cell or type in the number of the cell. It's D2. Take the log of this and I get that. Okay. Now, the easy way to do this very quickly to avoid having to do it by calculator, which is by hand or in each individual cell, I go to this cell and click on this button at the bottom and just drag it down, and I get all of those instantly. All right? Now, one problem I have is that um, when I do the graph and the, and the curve, I want my migration distance to be on the x-axis. Here it's going to be on the y-axis because it's on the right side of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. Um, in fact, let me do this. I'm going to make a new sheet. What I'm going to do is copy and paste. So migration distance, copy that. I'm going to put it over here. Edit, I can paste and match style. And then I'm going to come back over here. And I have to be careful on, on this. So log of molecular weight, copy. But when I come over here, because it was a formula in there, I transformed it with the log. I can't hit this one. I have to hit paste formula results. So there you go. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert chart 2D scatter and I, I get something that looks like this. All right. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go to the axes. Okay, and I can actually scale this a little bit. So let's worry about that. This is the x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and put it space for an axis name. Now for the x-axis, all of these points for the x are greater than 1 and less than probably about 3.5. So I'm going to say the max here is about 3.5 and the minimum is going to be 1. If I do that, it looks a lot better. And if I wanted to, I don't have to do this, I can also clean up the y-axis. It looks like it doesn't go higher than 4.2, so let's make the max about 4.4. And the min, it doesn't. it looks like it's, I can play around with it, but let's say 2.5 and see what that looks like. That looks much better. Now what I'm going to do that I have this, let me go ahead and label the axes. Very important to do. This is my migration distance. Now I have not done the relative migration. I just did the distance. I just simply measured the distance of the band from the uh, well, and that's the migration distance in centimeters. This right here is the log of the molecular weight. Okay, so there I go. Now I'm going to click the graph and go to series. I'm going to go to trend line. I want this to be a line. So I have that. And then let me click on the line. Go to show equation and show r squared value. So that's a very good r squared value. So this is my equation right here. And let me bring it up here. All right. So that's my equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, 
I'm going to type in the slope here. M is negative 0 0.6779. That's my slope. My y-intercept, it looks like 4.9927. Okay. And I want to calculate the molecular weight of a standard. Okay, so and I want to calculate the molecular weight of an unknown. So let me make a new region. So let's say these are going to be my unknowns. So x in this equation, this is going to be my unknown migration. Oops, unknown migration. I can't spell. Migration distance in centimeters. And then this column right here is going to be my log of the molecular weight, and that's for the unknown. All right, so let's, let's say we have a migration distance. Let's say just three right on the dot, three centimeters. So what I'm going to do is, um, and if you, need, if you need more understanding of why I'm doing this, go and watch my video in the playlist on absolute cells. I want to make M and B absolute cells. So let's actually give a few unknowns. Let's say I have an unknown of two, an unknown of four, and an unknown of... 2.5 and an unknown of 3.5, so five unknowns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to calculate the log of the molecular weight. I'm going to go to equals. I have a function. Now what I have to do, and watch the video on absolute cells if you want to know why this is, look at the equation down here. It's the slope times x plus the y-intercept gives me the log of the molecular weight. Okay. What I need to do is hit equals. I want to multiply the slope times this x value right here. So I'm going to do the slope, but I want the slope to be an absolute cell. So I'm going to hit the dollar sign, shift 4, and then I'm going to hit, because that slope is in D2, so dollar sign D, dollar sign 2, times, and that's the asterisk, shift 8, I'm just going to click this cell right there, plus, and then I want B, the y-intercept, to be an absolute cell, so dollar sign e dollar sign 2 there you go that's the log of the molecular weight now I go to this little yellow dot here drag it down and it does all of them now let me make another one if I want to undo the logarithm and actually find the molecular weight so molecular weight in Dalton's of these I need to take 10 to the power of whatever this is so I'm going to go to this equal sign 10 to the power I'm going to open parentheses just to be safe, and I'm going to click this cell. So I want to take log, or excuse me, 10 to that power, hit enter, and then go here, click the yellow dot, drag it down. These are the molecular weights in Dalton's for my unknowns. Okay, so that's how you can do, once you measure, once you actually measure, the hardest part of this with Excel or numbers, the hardest part is really just finding out what the measurements are. Once you have that, if you just follow this, you can get the molecular weights really easy. So imagine, imagine, let me do this. Imagine if I had, for unknown, let me actually erase these. Let's say I had a ton of these. Let's see, like I had 1.2, 1. 1. oops, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 3.4, 5, 6, 2, 5, 7, 9, 1. I mean, I just have a ton of these. I mean, let's say you, had, you were doing research and you just had a ton of these to analyze. I think I messed up there. So like two, four, five, six, seven, four, two, three, one. I just have a ton of these, right, to analyze. But what I can do is I can just program it. Go here. Again, I'm going to do the slope, dollar sign. That's in D, dollar sign 2. That's the slope. Times this first cell right here. That's my unknown migration distance. Plus B is an absolute cell. So that's dollar sign E, dollar sign 2. And then let me just come over here and drag all of these. There you go. They're all done now. And then equal sign to find the molecular weight, 10 to the power of, and then just this cell right here, close, enter. And then I can drag this down, and there's all of them. Okay, so literally, once I know the distances, it took me less than a minute to calculate all of the molecular weights. So you could literally have a 1,000 that you ran. And once you have the distances, you can figure out a thousand molecular weights in literally one minute or less. Okay? So hopefully that gave you some insight on how to analyze the gel electrophoresis. 
Um, I showed you how to how to figure out what the standard curve looks like. Okay, and then we ultimate, and that was here, and then we went and showed how to calculate the molecular weights of the unknowns. So literally, once you get the hang of this, you, once you have the migration distances, you can calculate the molecular weights and get your calibration curve in probably five minutes. You can literally do it that fast. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.